The Flash is directed by Andy Muschietti, who last directed the It films, Chapter 1 and 2. And to avoid any potential spoilers, I'm just going to read the official plot synopsis on IMDb, which states, Barry Allen uses his super speed to change the past, but his attempt to save his family creates a world without superheroes forcing him to race for his life in order to save the future. When I was a kid, I really loved The Flash. I had an action figure that had sort of a broken leg that kind of was loose and wobbly. It had horrible articulation. It was very early 90s, and so it didn't really move all that much. But my big exposure to The Flash as a kid was this, the 90s television show. No, not the whole show, just the pilot, because I rented this VHS tape from Blockbuster all the time. It's 94 minutes long. As a little kid, I thought this was the Flash movie, the only Flash movie we'd ever get. I didn't realize it was just a very long pilot. But Danny Elfman did the theme, just like he did for Batman, and it felt like a Flash movie to me. And I have always really appreciated the pilot for this and thought that for the early 90s it was really well done. And as a kid I always thought it would be great to see a big Flash movie in theaters, but I never really thought that would ever happen because you have to understand that as a kid in the 90s we didn't even have a Spider-Man movie yet. That didn't seem real. And it's taken a long time, but we've got our first solo Flash movie. And the road to its release was filled with potholes and a lot of roadblocks, but it's here. And I am just ecstatic to say that it, this is a really good movie. I mean, it might even be pretty great. It's actually one of my favorite DC movies in a very long time. Michael Keaton is in the movie as Batman, which I think for most people is a major selling point, especially myself. Michael Keaton is one of the very few actors involved with comic book films that just has universal praise. He got in and he got out. He had no problems. Batman and Batman Returns are both good. So it is actually a bit of a risk for him to come back and say, let's do one more, because he had a spotless record up until now. And of course, he's amazing in the film, and the film's treatment of him is great, too. He gets to do a lot of things, and you get to see Michael Keaton as Batman doing things that they did not have the technology or the ability to do in 1989 and 1992. And obviously it's fan service, but as I've said in the past, I'm a fan, service me. I, I don't get this criticism. I've never ever appreciated that criticism of just because it's a guaranteed like from me, that that, that means that they're cheating somehow. Because you can get fan service just utterly wrong and just completely screw it all up. And it takes work to make it work. And they put in that effort. Keaton is fantastic in the movie. His character feels like he fits. He does things that are fun to watch, but there's emotion to it. And it just is what I wanted to see. And the other is Supergirl, played by Sasha Kaye. The challenge here is that we are aware of the Supergirl character, but not this iteration, not this universe. And you've got a character that people have seen before in Barry Allen and, of course, Michael Keaton's Batman. So we have a whole new thing here that has to be set up. And I think they do the best job they could have in the amount of time that this character is given. I wouldn't say that she's the showcase by any means, but I really liked her. I thought she was great as Supergirl, and I thought the scenes that she had, especially with certain characters, fighting characters, was great. I am so hard to talk about these movies without talking about these movies, <laughs> but I'm doing my best. She was really good, is what I'm getting at. Could have just said that, I guess. Ezra Miller has not had the best few months in the press. They've gone through a lot of issues. There's been a lot of bad reports and things haven't been amazing. But I am happy to say that Miller is really good in the movie. And I think the filmmakers do a very smart thing here because Miller's interpretation of Barry Allen in past films has worked very well as a supporting character. This is a very jokey character. Doesn't take a lot of things very seriously. And to put that person in a whole movie and have everyone constantly follow them the whole time could potentially be a little annoying. So they've paired Barry Allen with an even more annoying Barry Allen and forced our Barry Allen that we've been following to recognize how annoying the other one is. That's a really smart way of making this character that has been very joke heavy in the past get a little more grounded and down to earth, have to witness the other version being like how many people may have seen them before. And that leads me to the humor. This movie is very, very funny. Miller is hilarious in the film, and they do a very good job with the dramatic stuff too, but there are a surprising amount of jokes here, 
And I have been on the fence about jokey superheroes lately. I think some of the MCU films have taken it a bit overboard, and humor has begun to trivialize things that may have been serious or should have been taken seriously, and the impact has been lost as a result. Here, I think it's just about a perfect balance. Things that are funny are things that are legitimately funny, and the film doesn't look at its serious subject matters or its comic book characters and, and look down upon them. In fact, it embraces them. But the film understands how some things could be funny if viewed through a certain lens, but it knows when to pull back on that humor and get serious. I think it's the perfect balance of it. And Andy Muschietti is such an imaginative director. His camera work is stunning. There's an early sequence involving the rescue of a lot of innocents that are falling from a building that was truly jaw-dropping. A movie like this requires a ton of CGI to make the story work, of course, and I do think that at times it became very noticeable. There are especially moments where you have both Barry Allens on screen, and I could always tell which one wasn't Ezra Miller in camera. And there was some kind of facial replacement or something. It didn't feel like they did what they used to do, which was the actor would just film both roles, and then they'd find ways to combine the footage later in post, like say with Adaptation or Enemy. Here I could always tell which face wasn't the in-camera Ezra Miller, and it was very distracting. That really is my biggest flaw with the movie, which is good, because that means story-wise the film works pretty damn well. As you probably have heard, I of course will not be the person to tell you, but there are a lot of things that happen in this movie, and the director unfortunately revealed one of them, and I gratefully didn't know that though, because I saw the movie without knowing anything except the first trailer, had some really great experiences with the film that I can't wait for you guys to have, but I was shocked to learn after seeing the movie that the director spoke about one of these things, and I, I don't know how or why Andy Muschietti did that. The movie's about to come out. Like, they kept it a secret for that long. Anyway, there's some great stuff in this movie, some stuff I never thought I'd see, and I really enjoyed seeing it, and I can't say anything of depth about it, except that it's great. And I jumped out of my seat and grabbed my friend's arm like a small child. I can only imagine I felt like how a child might have felt if they learned that Santa Claus is real and they saw Santa Claus. Like, that's, I don't know, that's the best way I can describe the feeling of euphoria that shot through my body. The film also leaves me with questions. Questions that I'm very excited about receiving the answers to. I, I have no idea how they will ever continue with certain things, but I really want to know what they're going to do. <laughs> my audience went crazy. That's all I'll say for the final few minutes of this film. It was like a volcanic eruption. So yeah, I mean, honestly, this movie worked wonderfully, except for some of the CGI. It was very noticeable to me, and I feel like there's a lot of things that maybe could have used a few more months and polished, but VFX workers are historically overworked and undervalued, and so I can assume that's probably a contributing factor. But yeah, despite all of the issues that have come forward to be a roadblock to this movie. It was very successful and good, and I hope you guys enjoy it when you see it. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.